Moving at a speed of 173 miles per hour, we are near our terminal velocity. Lander separation event has been detected. The radar is in lock and we have a good solution on the ground. Expected retro rocket ignition on my mark. Mark. Waiting confirmation from the spacecraft that retro rocket ignition has occurred. At this point in time, we should be on the ground. Now, 6 minutes 37 seconds from atmospheric entry. Still awaiting signal that we are on the ground. No signal at the moment. Deep Space Network tracking stations in Canberra and Goldstone are still searching for the primary signal. Stand by. What do we see? Wait, 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 wait. that the rover has landed base pedal down, which means right side up. Oh my God. Look. Oh, yes. <laughs> Good evening from the flight deck of the Opportunity. At this time, we are approximately 5 minutes 53 seconds from landing at the Meridiani planes near the equator of Mars. Over the next minute, we should begin to receive electronic tones from the spacecraft, indicating a gradual deceleration. This time, parachutes should have deployed. We are waiting confirmation that, that has occurred. Current altitude, 25,000 feet. Parachute deploy has been detected. <laughs> We have positive indication of parachute deployment. Oh, semaphore has been detected. Currently at an altitude of 18,000 feet. At this time, the radar should be active. We expect that the radar should lock on the ground in approximately 15 seconds from now. Current altitude 11,000 feet. Current velocity 180 miles per hour. Currently decelerating at 0.4 Gs. We expect that the airbags will inflate approximately 20 seconds from now. Current altitude 4,000 feet. Radar solution matrix 21. Yes. 3,000 feet. Uh, the radar has a positive loss on the ground. We have a retro rocket firing solution. Retro rocket ignition on my mark. Mark. At this time, the retro Dad rocket has fired. We have yeah. confirmation. Yeah. Retro rockets have ignited. At this time, we are five minutes fifty-five seconds after entry. We should be bouncing on the ground. As the uh, spacecraft is bouncing on the surface of Mars and rolling around, the antenna is pointed in many different orientations. We're seeing it on the LCP. Very strong on LC, on our LCP. We're on Mars, everybody. This is the sweetest spot I've ever seen. <laughs>
How do I feel about the fact that it's gone on for five years? Exhausted. <laughs> I mean, really tired. Uh, you know, I thought we were going to get maybe six months out of these things. I never thought we'd get five years. Um, how do I feel? Very proud. You know, uh, proud particularly of the, the engineers here at JPL who built these machines and, and built them better than, better than they had to be. But getting there, you know, it's, if you've ever been to the Grand Canyon, I mean, you know it's there, right? But because it's a hole in the ground, you don't see it until you're practically on top of it. And it was like that with Victoria, too. I mean, we were 100 meters back, and you could hardly see a thing. And then one day, we're right at the, uh, at the rim of it, and poof, there's just this spectacular scenery, this fabulous geology laid out in front of us. And yeah, the combination of just what a glorious view it was plus so much effort that went into getting there. Pulling up to the rim of Victoria was to me one of the really special moments in the whole mission. The thing about a rover is you can always go someplace new. It's not like a lander mission where you're, you know, after a while you're just monitoring the environment. There's always something new out there on the horizon and if you build a spacecraft that lasts, you keep making discovery after discovery after discovery. Not five years. I was one of the optimists that felt the rovers would survive the first winter and that we would have an extended mission, but I never thought they would last through three Martian winters and continue to explore for five years. The rovers have made Mars familiar to us. You know, prior to their landing, it was this mysterious place. And even though we had had successful orbiting missions, um, we didn't have a human perspective on Mars. It was always a very distant perspective. The rovers have given us that human perspective, and now it is familiar to us. I mean, these are phenomenal vehicles, uh, so well engineered and designed and built uh, that they've been able to last, but they've been able to do this very challenging, dangerous uh, exploration of the surface. I mean, they are very much intrepid explorers. You know, our proxies on the surface of Mars, um, you know, going forth to explore this hostile and alien world. Mars is a pretty harsh place, and so these things do come up from time to time. We've had dust storms before. We have really low power situations in winter. Um, occasionally we've had, you know, other small glitches um, that have caused us some tense moments. But um, spirit and opportunity both seem to be able to pull it out every time. Uh, they constantly uh, exceed our expectations and their design and uh, they seem to really be able to handle much more than anyone originally thought they could. Now they are well named. Opportunity really has been incredibly opportunistic and lucky. It basically found water from its lander. Um, it's been able to, to um, do all kinds of, of things because it was lucky, like being able to drive into these craters. Uh, it found its own heat shield and we were able to examine for the first time a heat shield that was used on another planet because it happened to land nearby. Spirit really has had to have a lot of spirit to, to keep going. It's been the little rover that could in a way. It's had to work very hard for all of its discoveries. Uh, first of all, not finding water anywhere near its landing site and having to drive well beyond its design expectations to even find evidence of water. Having to drive for, for more than half of its lifetime now with a broken wheel um, and using that to make its biggest science discovery. So they've, they've both ended up in really, really exciting places. It's just Spirit had to work a lot harder to find all that evidence than Opportunity did. I never in my wildest imagination believed it was going to go on for five years and give me this opportunity to see so much of Mars and for so long and to learn so much about not only about the vehicles but about the science of Mars and about you know the the area in which they landed and to just have this opportunity that that I thought was going to be a terrific little kind of short honeymoon just kind of go on and on and on and on and on and, and just and just get better all the time. The 
these trenches that she would that she was uh, uh, digging that just sort of naturally happened by dragging a wheel through the dirt um, had these bright patches at the bottom, so you could see them in the color images. They were just they stood out absolutely blinding white. Um, the science team was very interested in this, and when we drove her back over to them. Some of those patches turned out to be uh, to have a high, very high, like 90% silica content. And the way you get a high 90% silica content is lots of water activity. So by dragging Spirit's broken wheel around, she actually turned up some of the best evidence we found uh, of water on either vehicle so far on Mars. One of the most memorable and poetic images from the entire mission is an image that Spirit took of the Earth. It was the very first picture that has ever been taken of the Earth from the surface of another planet. And it's uh, such an amazing eye-opening image to think that, uh, that everything that you're used to is, is the evening star from Mars' point of view. So just as, as Venus is our evening star, we are the evening star on Mars.
I modified the value of that so that it prevents it from popping up. Because if you go backwards, yeah, you know, you, it'll pop the back wheel. wheel off the ground. Oh, will it? Yeah. yeah. So this is we saw that. Yeah. This is That's basically just to keep the center wheel from digging from, itself in. Okay. Okay. Doing some crazy things, okay. and you need a reference, which is to compare it to. Okay. So, so let's run Chris's one. Then we yeah. run yours, then we That's run great. Jake's, and then we keep running until we find something that works. That's fine, yeah. It seems like it's doing what you want, but it's sliding down the hill. We're getting a little bit. Are we climbing a little bit? 